Hello, my name is Vitika Yadav, and I'm the chair of the Global Advisory Board on Sexual Health and Wellbeing. Most of us may not remember every time we have sex, but we probably know our first sexual experience. Firsts are often etched deep into our memory. If you ask people about their first sexual experiences, you would see that most experiences tend to cluster around a few themes, happy, sad, exciting, awkward, embarrassing, anxiety. We at the Global Advisory Board on Sexual Health and Wellbeing have been talking to lots of young people about their first sexual experiences. We have heard stories of discomfort, disappointment, excitement, unwanted sexual contact, and much more. Many young people spoke of deciding to go along with the demands or requests for sex in order to get it over with, or because of peer pressure, or out of pity, or just an inability to form an, an articulate and adequate response to the situation. For young people, thinking about first sexual experiences can feel intimidating. They have lots of questions. What will it feel like? Will it hurt? Will it be painful? What if I don't enjoy it? What if my girlfriend doesn't want it? It seems evident in personal narratives such as, this, such as these that we have not yet developed a vocabulary or visuals to help young people navigate these moments of first sexual experiences. Young people enter a realm of confusion and cross signals, one which is rife with the potential for misunderstanding and failure. Much of life is learning from such experiences. Yet, the way we are initiated into the world of sex may, in some non-trivial way, affect the sexual journey we have. While there are numerous ways we may have experienced our first sexual encounter, rarely do we ask young people about how pleasurable their experiences are. Also, interestingly, while researchers have thoroughly studied the what, who, and when of first sexual experiences, Yet, they have not really thought about how young people look at pleasure in first sexual experiences. We acknowledge that there exists very little pleasure-positive, sex-positive, rice-based, and gender-transformative information for sex starters. To address this knowledge gap, we coordinated a rapid review of published peer-reviewed research to determine what is currently known about sexual pleasure in first sexual experiences. We found 23 papers exploring the subject and its intersection with sexual health and sexual rights. The results reveal significant gaps in erotic education, gender equity, vulnerability, and connection and communication efficacy, and highlights important domains to consider in future research. Our findings draw out key features, one being that individuals with the agency to formulate their own definition and context of, pleasure, of what pleasure means to them are more likely to experience pleasure during their first sexual experience. Following this rapid review, which was published in the Journal of Sex Research, we held a first round of exploratory interviews with young people as well as subject matter experts. Based on the insights, we developed core parameters and principles on content and visuals in first sexual experience. We developed a discussion guide and we held a second round of interviews with young people using a set of, uh, of existing first sexual experience video resources. And following that, we systematically analyzed the interviews and reactions to the resources and developed a playbook. Overall, we were looking at answering two important questions. Which approaches are most effective at reaching and engaging young people in the context of first sexual experience? which approaches are most effective at influencing first sexual experience outcomes. The findings revealed that before young people start their journey into having sex, they either do not get any information, and if they do, they're bombarded with, with information, sometimes accurate, sometimes inaccurate, and inaccurate, moralistic, incomplete, or untrue. And this leads to build up fears and sometimes even pain and regret. Young people want and have the right to get more information. They want to be prepared both emotionally and physically. A key aspect of our work is to support young people when they start their sexual journey, not only to avoid risks, but be able to enjoy it. We also realize that there are far more SRHR content creators today than ever before. As a content creator, educator, or condiment contraceptive advocate, or pleasure product marketing professional, one can really help their audience have clarity and be better prepared for their first sexual experience. 
they have a chance to create relevant, realistic, sex-positive, inclusive, and understandable information. Therefore, we have developed a playbook. This is meant to inspire and help content creators who are also young people have a pleasure focus in their work on first sexual experiences using a triangle approach of sexual health, sexual rights, and sexual pleasure. We've also de developed a working definition on first sexual experience. First time sex involves all sexual activities and acts partners can do together for the first time. This includes all activities that raise desire and can give pleasure to both partners. It can be expressed through both non-penetrative and penetrative sexual acts as, as, as they are both equal relevant expressions of sex. We also developed a criteria for assessment of resources, which we believe are four areas of best practice, realistic, inclusive, sex positive, and evidence-based. The playbook covers the following topics, first time sex, what people want, what they want to know, sexual feelings, fantasies, realities, how to stay safe, consent, how to make first sexual experiences more pleasurable, how does it really work in practice, getting rid of misunderstandings and misconceptions, how to stay safe, and talking about sex. We acknowledge that everyone reading and using this playbook will work in different settings, contexts, and cultures, and will be making resources and content for various audiences. All these different contexts come with values and norms, especially about young people, sex, sexuality, pleasure, and first-time sex. There may also be specific national regulations and laws that can influence their work. And finally, everyone has their own personal biases, experiences, values, and norms. All of the above will perhaps color the content of their work, as they have done with ours in producing this playbook. What is needed is to try to be aware of your own biases and judgments and address those. First time sex, like anything else, is really perfect and can be messy or exciting. It can also raise questions and fears both before and after. We made this playbook because we want young people to be prepared and have the best possible first sexual experience. In putting this guide together, we looked at several exciting resources and how they illustrate good approaches. We want people to be able to look back at their first sexual experiences with a smile on their faces. To end, I will leave with an ask. We want you all to tell us what, what we can include in this playbook, along with the list of topics that I've already shared. Please reach out to Dr. T, right here, or, or me, and tell us how we can collaborate and how we can make this playbook work for everyone. Thank you.